Welcome to Electron Online. In the previous video, we showed you how to calculate the acceleration of a rolling solid disk. Here we're going to do a rolling hollow ball. Now it has a larger moment of inertia than a solid disk, which means acceleration should be less than before. In the previous video, the acceleration was two-thirds g times the sine of theta. So let's find out what it is in this case. Again, we use two equations because there's two unknowns. First of all, we're trying to find the acceleration down the incline, but secondly, we do not know what mu is. We don't know what the coefficient of friction is. However, it does provide the catalyst to do the angular acceleration because it provides the torque in order to let this roll instead of slide down the incline. So we have two equations we're going to deal with. The first one is that the torque is equal to I times alpha. This is the rotational equivalent of the equation F equals MA. Because it's the torque that causes the, ang the angular acceleration, we have to take that into account as well. Now what causes the torque? Well, let's find out. Using the forces involved on the ball, we can see that it's gravity acting downward, that is equal to mg. We then have the two components, the one that's parallel to the incline, which is mg times the sine of theta, which pulls the object down the incline. And then we have the mg cosine of theta, which is the perpendicular component of the weight, which in turn causes a normal force, the incline pushing back, the normal force, and the normal force is equal to the same here, mg cosine of theta. Now, it's the normal force that provides the friction. We know that there's going to be a friction force between the rolling ball and the incline. The friction force is in this direction, force friction, and by definition, that's equal to the normal force times mu. And since the normal force is equal to this, we can say that the friction force can be written as mg cosine theta times mu. And this provides the force to cause a torque on the rolling, rotating ball. Now, plugging that into the equation over here, we can write that the torque, which is equal to the friction force, force friction, times the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the point of rotation, which is the center of the ball, that would equal the radius of the ball, times the radius, equals the moment of inertia of the hollow ball, which is equal to 2 thirds, the mass times r squared, and alpha, the angular acceleration, can be related to the linear acceleration by saying that a is equal to r times alpha, or alpha can be written as a divided by r. Substituting that into for alpha, we get alpha equals a divided by r. Now we can simplify that equation a little bit because we have an r on the left side and r squared on the right side, so this cancels out one of those. We have an r in the numerator, an r in the denominator, they cancel as well. So we're left with the friction force is equal to two-thirds the mass of the ball times the acceleration down the incline. Now substituting for the friction force, the quantity that it's equal to, we can now write that this is equal to, and I should use the same m. Well, let's use a small m here, that way we don't get things confused. Let's just go ahead and write small m so we don't get confused here. That's indeed the same m, it's the mass of the ball. So the friction force can be written as mg cosine of theta times mu is equal to two-thirds ma, and now we can see we have an m on both sides that cancels, so we can write that g times the cosine of theta times mu equals two-thirds times the acceleration down the incline. Now we also use F equals ma because after all, the, all the forces aiding the acceleration minus all the forces opposing the acceleration equals the mass times acceleration. That is still true. We can then say that mg sine theta, mg sine theta, that's the force aiding the acceleration minus the friction force, mg cosine theta times mu, that's the force opposing acceleration, equals the mass times acceleration. Here again, notice that every term has an m in it from the mass. We can simplify that, so we can cancel out the mass everywhere. We can write this as g sine of theta minus g cosine of theta times mu equals the acceleration. Now notice those two equations have two unknowns in them. They both have an acceleration term and they both have mu, which we don't know what that is. So therefore we can eliminate mu by solving one of the equations in terms of mu and, su and substituting that into the other equation. 
We can here write that mu is equal to 2 times acceleration divided by the 3 is in the denominator, 3g times the cosine of theta. Substituting this into the second equation right here, we can write this as g sine theta minus g cosine theta. Instead of mu, we can write what mu is equal to. 2 times acceleration divided by 3g times the cosine of theta, and that equals acceleration. Right away, you can see that we have a cosine and theta in the numerator and one in the denominator. We have a g in the numerator and a g in the denominator, which means that we can now write g sine of theta minus 2a over 3, or 2 thirds a equals a, which means this term can now go to the right side. We have g sine theta equals a plus 2 thirds a. Well, a, which is 3 thirds plus 2 thirds is 5 thirds g sine theta equals 5 thirds a, or multiplying both sides of the equation by 3 fifths, and turning the equation around, we can say that a is equal to 3 fifths g sine theta. And that's indeed a slower acceleration than we have with the solid cylinder. Remember from the previous video, a was 2 thirds g sine theta, here a is only 3 fifths g sine theta, because the hollow ball has a larger moment of inertia than the solid disk, and therefore it's more difficult to get it to rotate, therefore the acceleration will be slower. So two rolling objects rolling down the same incline will have a different acceleration simply due to the fact that they have different moment of inertias. And that's how we know that.